getting up right the moment you went yesterday, your bag's packed. Well, now I'm walking back in again and unpacking them. But you can't. I don't keep saying you can't. I just have. But, but that's immoral. Living with my own husband. But you're not. I mean, I'm not. Not anymore. Oh, yes, you are. I bet you haven't even filled the forms in yet. I've hardly had the chance. You've only been gone 24 hours. I know. So what's changed your mind? Well, that was yesterday. Pity. Oh, honestly, I never suddenly thought of you here trying to cope on your own. You never were very good at coping on your own, were you? I mean, look at that dear little apron. <laughs> well, why aren't you eating out tonight like you usually do? Fancy the change. Cooking an omelette? No. Uh, what then? You must know. Frozen kippafinnets. <laughs> And there's no need to laugh. I happen to like them. You used not to. How would you know? You're always too busy in your office to know what I was having for my dinner. Oh, darling, don't start all that again. Start what? Well, all that stuff about a woman's place being in the home. It's terribly old-fashioned, you know. I just happen to think that a man shouldn't have to stand in line behind his wife's career. Do you know, sometimes you won't have for three whole weeks. The man at the Chinese restaurant used to wonder why I didn't move my bed in there. <laughs> Chinese food. After three weeks, even my breakfast egg was tasting sweet and sour. If you wanted to eat in all the time, you should have married a cook. It wasn't the only reason. I just, I just wanted to see you occasionally. Oh, like I wanted to see you when we were first married. Remember all those nights? That was different. Oh, yes. It was different, wasn't it? I was forgetting. You're a man. Look, I was working for that damn film company in those days. Didn't you realise I was spending all my nights hanging around airport lounges waiting for so-called VIPs to turn up? Do you know, I'd much rather be here with you. All I knew was I was alone. Well, that's why I took this job in the first place. Well, if I wasn't able to have children and I couldn't have you, well, at least I was going to have a life that belonged to me. So is that the only reason you'd come back? To pick up the argument where you left off? No. What then? Well, I got to thinking and... Well, you were right about some things. I neglected you dreadfully. And, well, from now on, it's going to be different. So you are giving him your job then? Well, no. But well, then, don't bother unpacking, because you're not staying. <laughs> I bought steak and wine for dinner. Thank you, but I've had my dinner. It's so. What? Oh, with uh, French salad and button mushrooms. <clears throat> I'm sticking to my keepers. Well, by now, they'll be sticking to the pan. Well, I'll manage. Who the hell's this? Well, you remember Greta? No, I don't remember Greta. I've never seen her before in my life. Oh, don't take any notice of him. He's all upset because I've ruined his kipper fillets. He'll simmer down in a minute. Now, did you manage to park the car? Oh, yes, round the corner. Oh, good. Now, Miss Ferguson is my secretary. What? Well, yes, she's here to do some light filing, a bit of typing, you know. You don't live here any longer. And besides, sometimes I have work to do from home. I can't possibly concentrate with her tapping away on that thing. I won't disturb you. No, you won't, because she's not staying. But darling, she's my secretary. And this is my typewriter. But in that case, we should both be in the office, covered in black until you need them in the morning. But I shall be here in the morning. What? I spend too much time at the office, so in future I shall be working from home a little more. Sylvia, she's not staying here, and neither are you. Oh, are you going to have perch come and evict us? Now come on, Greta, I'll show you where you're staying. I'm putting her in the room next to mine. But she's not sleeping here. Oh, darling, of course she is. After all, I can't stay here now we're separated without a chaperone. A chaperone? That's the last thing you're going to need. Come in, Perch. Where are we going, sir? Have what? The booze. I didn't order any booze. No, sir, Mr. Tarner did. He, he rang me this afternoon. What? And told you to deliver it here? Yeah, he said to prepare for a party. Looks like you've done that, all right. Um, <laughs> just pop it over there, will you? 
bloke in our flask and asked if I was getting ready for prohibition. Yeah. Not surprised. Mary's a church for a couple of guys there with a packet of crisps, I can tell you. Yes. Still tisn't every day, is it? What isn't? Dear Freedom, time to celebrate. <coughs> I wish you could get rid of my missus so easily. I reckon you were born lucky, sir. But I must say, I thought you were very firm. Put your book down. I admire that in man, sir. Master in your own home. Out you go, you said, and out she went. Yes. Yes, she did do that, didn't she, Birch? Anyway, I think there's plenty there, sir. Thank you, Birch. Oh, hello, Birch. Oh, my God. <laughs> Delighted, madam, it's a, uh, just a bit of a surprise, you might say. It's uh, nice to see you back. It didn't last long, did it, sir? What <laughs> didn't? The revolution. <laughs> oh, dear old Perch, he hasn't changed a bit. What do you expect when he got a day? So what is all this, then? Oh, that's, it's, um, it's, it's just a few bottles. Oh, darling, you are so you knew all along, didn't you? Knew what? Well, that I'd be coming back. No, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I thought I'd be alone. Anyway, I didn't order that booze. Harry. Did you? Harry? Yes. Uh, I might have guessed. You told him about us then? Well, yes, he, he phoned last night. Huh, I bet he was delighted. After all, he knows all about broken marriages. He was absolutely glad that you knew to know that yours had failed as well. As a matter of fact, he was very upset. No, oh, not too upset to order all the booze for the celebration, though. Sylvia, nobody's celebrating. Oh, commiserating, then. Call it what you like. It's still an awful lot of booze. Looks like you're laying in for a siege. Couldn't you have waited just 24 hours? Well, how did I know you were coming back? I thought I was going to be alone. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to be alone. Miss Ferguson. Oh, call cool. who you like. I think I'm going to kiss you. Uh, I should struggle. <laughs> I'm stronger than you are. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I shall scream. Oh, I really think that you would. Have you and Harry got some girls coming over? Girls? Do you know what girls are? What do you take me for? Come on. Even if I had. You mean no position to complain? I'm not complaining, I'm just asking. The face is complaining. Besides, you were the one that walked out on me, remember? Well, you were pushing pretty hard. And when you did, I was free to gallop off with anybody that I chose. That's why I hardly expected you to gallop off to the nearest bunch of loose mares the moment my back was turned. But I didn't. Anyway, she was starting to about girls. Well, come on. How many? What? Girls. Look, Harry phoned him. He said he'd come over, have a quiet beer, you know, two old friends consoling each other. Hmm. No party? No. No girls? No. All that booze for just you and Harry? Yes! Well, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Oh, <sighs> oh my God. Quite the new man. And this after only 24 hours. Just imagine what you'll be like in a couple of weeks. We'll soon get rid of that healthy look. <laughs> um, Harry, there's something out of this. No regrets. You've done the right thing. Take it from me, I know. But it takes a bit of getting used to, but no regrets, no looking back. Who's looks him alright? Uh, yes, it's over there. Oh, great. Uh, I had a few bottles in, you know, Harry. Oh, those will do for starters. Look, Harry, listen now. Now, look, if you're going to start weeping on my shoulder, I'm going straight out again. Hmm? Positive thinking. That's what we've got to have. Positive thinking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Max, we're going to have a ball. Oh, 
a look at that. Mm. Is there a finer sign? You know, I may not be sober for the rest of the month. <laughs> What's in here? Well, what do you think? A pair of pajamas and a toothbrush. I always carry spares. <laughs> but you can't stay here. Don't worry. When the moment arrives, I'll make myself invisible. Anyway, I'm not. 
Not what? Coming back. Which you just did. Uh, yes, I know, but um, I'm, uh, Max and I are still getting divorced. You're still getting divorced? Yes. It's about what Max wants, isn't it, now? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> You need a bigger glass there, Harry. You're still getting divorced? Yes. But you've come back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Look after him? Yes, I'm looking after him. <laughs> oh, well, that'll give the judge a laugh, won't it? <laughs>
You always were a good picker, Harry. But inside marriage, I don't know. You close the door, turn around, and they've turned into wives. <laughs> <laughs> so you learned your lesson? You bet. The only girl to marry is a single girl. The trouble is, once you marry them, they're not single any longer. <laughs> Weren't you sad when they left? Glad? Of course I was glad. Sad? The girl said sad. What? <laughs> I cry every time I go and see my accountant. Do you know, do you know, Miss Ferguson, before I got married, I was a man of property. That's right, isn't it, Max? Yeah, you had a, uh, a big house in uh, Weybridge, a luxury flat in Chelsea, and a bungalow by the sea. Yeah, the first one got Weybridge, the second the luxury flat, and the third lives in sunny Sussex. <laughs> and I, what have I got? A basement flat in Bayswater. Well, maybe you just haven't met the right girl. I suppose. Once is a mistake. Three times, and you know you're a marked man. <laughs> so what now? Have you given up on girls? <laughs> oh, no. oh, Harry's given up girls like he's given up booze. You don't stop eating just because you don't own a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the food away, sir. Will there be anything else? No, that'll be all perch. You can go back to your lips now, thank you. I suppose it's all off then now, sir. Party and all that. Looks like it, Perch. Of course it's not all off. The boys will still be coming. Well, well, well it, 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 it seems rather to have lost its point now. There, there, there doesn't seem much to celebrate. If you part the plain speaking, madam. Of course there is. Mr. Winton and I are still getting divorced. You are? Oh, that is different. Oh, oh I am delighted. <laughs> No other fellas. What do you want? An audience? <laughs> so there's, 
There's just the four of us? Yes, four. You know, it's a nice round number. Two of each kind. <laughs> no, no, I can't have girls coming here, Harry. Not tonight, not the night after we've separated. Max, you said you wanted some action. Yes, but Sylvia and Miss Ferguson are out there. Well, look, the girls don't have to say anything. They can just sit there. We can look at them, talk to each other, and when the conversation runs dry, there's always something else to do. No, you're going to have to phone them up. Put them on. It's too late. They're on the way. What? I can't stop them. I'm in a bit of arm. No, stop clowning around. We can phone them up and put them off. I've told you they're on their way. <laughs> but what? Is this our house? How about, how about Sylvia and Look, no, I'm willing to stop being so romantic. You're getting separated, divorced. Hmm? She can't be expected to behave like a monk. Well, no, but the girls come around. The first night after we were separated. How's that going to look to the judge? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just think what that's going to do to your alimony. Precisely. <laughs> oh, okay, look, I suppose you've got a point. Look, we better go out and head them off. Come on, some party. What's that for? Well, you never know. <laughs> Maybe out there sometime. <laughs>
If you were here first. Good heavens, we're not queuing for a bus. Max and Harry would never forgive me if I let you go. Do you suppose there'd be some other fellas, you know, all to go around? Oh, I expect so. Oh. Maybe they made a mistake about the dates. Yes, maybe. You're for tonight and we for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice to me, I'm going home. Don't be dark, please. So, uh, how did you girls meet Mr. Tyler? Well, I'm a typist where he works. And so am I. And so is she. And last night I was getting ready to go home, I was putting my coat on, and Harry, <laughs> Harry came in and he said, Would you like to come over for a little do with his friend? Um, and we were friends. And I said yes. And he said he had this friend, um, Max? Yeah. He was friend Max when we lit a celebration and didn't want to come, so I said yeah. And so did I. And so did she. <laughs> did he happen to say what it was they were celebrating? Not exactly. Something about an old girl leaving at last. <laughs> oh, did they? Is that what told you? Not exactly, no. Oh. You see, well, uh, Greta and I are just here to do the cooking. The, the party is just for the four of you. You're kidding. He asked you Oliver just to do the cooking. What a nerve. Well, I have known him for a long time. Do you do this often then, the cooking, I mean? Not oh, quite often. Well, more for Max than for Harry. You see, as a matter of fact, Max is my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> uncle? I thought you said they were young. Yes, I expect that's what they said. I never said they were young. I said they were mature. <laughs> You're not the first. What do you mean? They've got into a sort of habit of it. Oh yes, well, some men like to play golf. Max and Harry prefer girls. Hey, I'm off. Well, oh, do sit down. They're not treating me like any game. Look, I'm hungry. If you're going to go, go after dinner. <laughs> so, what kind of girls? Oh, all kinds. Chinese, Russian, African. You mean? Girls. Oh, yes. Oh, you should have seen the Chinese girls. They were sweet. They all sat cross-legged around the coffee table for dinner. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they spent most of the evening on the floor. That's it. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not getting me on the floor for dinner. Well, oh, you're not Chinese, are you? I'm not Russian either. Doesn't mean I'm not going to say no. Oh, oh here they are. Oh, sorry. Tommy? Oh, it's all. 
and one tomato juice. How about you, Max Whiskey? Just to take the top off. Why is he going to drink it out of the bottle? Oh yes, he usually does. He stays on the washing up. <laughs> <laughs> she's just having a little joke at my expense. And she's only doing that because she's um because she's my sister. <laughs> Your sister? That's right. She said that you were her uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right! Yes! How did she make a mistake like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you. Sylvia's got this age complex. Well, she doesn't like anybody to think that she's old enough to have a brother that looks like you. <laughs> Whiskey, uncle. <laughs> she's ready for you all. What's that? Yeah, a come and get it. Sylvia was telling us how she and Greta come over and do the cooking for you. Oh, was she? You're ever so lucky I'm such a kind sister. Yes. Well, come on, boys. Show the girls into dinner, then. Through you. Oh, Harry, don't say you've forgotten your manners. Oh. Max. Oh. <laughs> you stay away from me. I've been hearing all about you. <laughs> yes. Bet you have. It's all right. So you go along with Max. You'll be quite safe. Well, if you say so. After all, I shall be here to see he behaves himself. Okay. But don't you try any of your Chinese nonsense on me. <laughs> 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 Aren't you angry? Angry? Of course not. This is just what I wanted. <laughs> 